Day ninety three. Anyone for tennis? Tuesday, and we are battening down the hatches. The wind is returning again with a vengeance. So far, the summer here has not really happened. Today, it is overcast and sticky, humid. Our gym has opened, and we went last night. Okay, so it is not the normal busy evening, but there were people, and Chris's class was about half the normal number. What was encouraging? Was the queue to join the gym? At one point, ten people deep, well, social distance deep. There were lots of arrows and nowhere to sit. Most of the members were totally ignoring the arrows. Years of travelling on the tube, and I can't help but follow arrows on the stairs and corridors. Alcohol cleaner dispensers were everywhere, the same ones they use in hospitals, and we had to clean equipment before and after. But twice a day. They have one of those fog cleaning machines you now see on trains and aircraft. The changing rooms were open, but you are currently encouraged not to use them, and more importantly, you could shower. A decision has been made that it is probably more unsanitary to keep the showers closed than open. Obviously, the difference in Spain is that everyone wears a mask, and everybody was, with one exception. Once you found your place in the class and put your equipment out, you could take off your mask, and frankly, it was like a normal body pump class, just a bit shorter. Out on the tennis courts, people were playing tennis, and at the back where the paddle courts were, they were also enjoying that game. Paddle is a cross between tennis with a thicker racket, come shovel, and a slightly softer ball, with a splash of. Squash thrown in as it is played in an enclosed court, the ones at our gym being made of glass. They're about half the size of a tennis court. It was a Mexican by the name of Enrique Cocoera who, in 1969, decided to adapt his squash court at his home in Acapulco, and he took some of the ideas from platform tennis, which had been developed back in 1912 in New York as an all-weather way of playing tennis, but on a much smaller court, a third the size of a tennis court, about the same size as a squash court. So Enrique created paddle coquera. So he is the first person to create the padel game. But it was Enrique's Spanish friend Alfonso who loved the game and brought it back to mainland Spain. He decided to create the first two padel courts in a tennis club in Marbella in 1974. Now, more than 10 million people play padel. It's one of the fastest-growing sports in the world, and of course, we have outdoor state-of-the-art courts at our gym. I have to say, I struggle with tennis. The court for me is a bit large. I am tempted to give padel a go. It is very, very popular in this part of Spain. So last night felt a bit more normal. We met up with Carmen, who joined the class. I have to say, we were all huffing and puffing a lot more than usual, particularly me, as the evil god Bacchus has been playing havoc with my weight. It does occur to me. That the massive financial downturn and job losses created by the virus is a very different financial crisis than before. In the previous crisis, I felt helpless. The decisions to bring the economy back were being made by the banks. You could only look on as a bystander. Now, here today, I realised that if I took courage, went to the gym, or went shopping as the Brits did yesterday. Took a holiday abroad, put up with the even more misery at the airport. It would be my little bit to help bring the economies back along with the jobs that have been lost. There is no denying that the world will be a different place, but how different it is actually is, in some ways, up to you and me. And there is a better chance of a faster recovery than in previous times. Unless you believe that the economic model the world runs on is broken for good, my client and friend Tony Wrighton, 
who presents the brilliant Zestology podcast, has started making his own yoghurt and is thinking of going camping in the UK as a summer holiday. I wonder how many other people are discovering the good life and changing their whole way of thinking. Here in Spain, and certainly in this area, there are many Spanish families that have a small holding, a larger allotment, and they grow fruit and vegetables in their gardens too. It is quite normal to be inundated with produce. Last night, Carmen brought us eggs, which she described as fresh from the arse of the chicken, and lemons that were twisted and deformed compared to those perfect lemons in the supermarket, but taste delicious. My favourite fruits are the pomelos, what the Spanish call grapefruit. They are soft, juicy, and have that proper tangy grapefruit flavour. We get about a month of glut of those in the autumn. I'm thinking of growing herbs and tomatoes. I try to grow Mediterranean mint in the UK, but the first sign of frost it fell into a deadly swoon and died. You would think I'd be able to grow it here. Down below us, the neighbours are turning their back garden into a grow-your-own with fruit trees and raised beds for veggies. I have to say, I'm looking forward to their harvest glut. The day ends with the removal of poor Charlie the cockroach from Chris's bathroom. Last night, we had a swarm of flying red ants in the house the sticky night air and our house lights attracting them. So maybe the Spanish summer will return proper next week when lockdown ends. Enjoying Spanish practices? Hit the subscribe button on your favourite podcast player and catch up with all episodes. The music leaving Havana was produced by Marty Stone and Ben Hatton and is reproduced under licence from Storyblocks. Spanish Practices is a Creative Radio Partnership Limited production.